Hi, it's Peter Schiff again. It is Tuesday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. And basically, you know, the bear market rally in stocks is continuing, again, not only just in the United States, but around the world. The dollar is continuing to soften a bit, although not dramatically, although I would imagine if this rally continues uh, that the dollar will ultimately roll over as a result. We're also seeing a lot of strength in commodities. In fact, I'm looking at oil prices. And I think if crude oil can get reasonably above $50 a barrel, which it looks like to me it's in the process of getting ready to break out after three or four months of consolidation, I think it'll be very easy for oil to move back up to at least $100 a barrel. I think it can easily do it before the end of the year. I think initially the rise in, uh, in commodity prices, oil prices, other commodities, might be received by Wall Street as good news, a sign that the economy is growing. I think it's more likely a sign that inflation is really starting to kick in and that the temporary factors that have been suppressing prices are now being overwhelmed by the inflationary factors that have been exerting upward pressure on prices. And of course, behind the, behind the scenes, even though there has been some kind of a decline in demand, there's also been a big decline in supply, both present supply and, and future supply. So I think these supply shortages are going to eventually overwhelm the reduction in demand. And again, once the U.S. dollar starts to decline, I expect there to be a surge in foreign demand, even though there might not be a corresponding uh, rise in demand here in the United States, the demand from abroad that will flow from a weaker dollar will push up prices for Americans. So ultimately, these rising prices are going to be a negative for the U.S. economy although people on Wall Street might originally jump to erroneous conclusions that the economy is improving. You know, along the lines of the economy, I happen to see both Barack Obama speak today on television as well as one of his top economic advisors, Larry Summers. First of all, President Obama is basically trying to reassure everybody that he is not going to be giving up any of his plans uh, on education or health care. Uh, that these are vital plans and he is not going to be restrained by uh, the economic situation or condition to give up any of his agenda, which ultimately I think is, is, is the wrong way to go. I mean, his agenda is, is wrong-minded anyway, even in the best of times. But obviously, if the economy is in trouble, uh, if we, we have too much debt, the last thing that we need is a government to accumulate additional debt for these projects. Now, in Barack Obama's defense, he thinks that more education or more government spending on education is vital to helping improve education in America. But of course, the facts uh, don't support the president. In fact, the more money we spend on education at a national level, uh, the less educated our children become. In fact, the government is undermining the education of our children by its excess involvement in, in education. So it's actually counterproductive. The same thing with health insurance or health, health government spending on health. We would have a more efficient, better health care system if the government was out of it. So yes, maybe health care and education are vital, but it's not vital that we spend more money on them. In fact, it's vital that we have less government spending in those areas if we really want to see some improvement. So not only are the president's plans going to further undermine the areas of our economy he's trying to help, but the money that we're borrowing to finance it is, is, is compounding the problem that he's creating. And of course, one of the, the more comical aspects of what the president is saying is at the same time he's running up the deficit, he's talking about the fact that he's going to cut the deficit in half uh, during his presidency. Well, first of all, even if he accomplishes that feat, it's a disaster. Because the first deficit that he's proposing is $1.75 trillion. And I think by the time it's all said and done, it'll end up being a $2 trillion deficit by the time we get the numbers in. So if he cuts that deficit in half in four years, all he's doing is bringing the budget deficit down to $1 trillion, which is still more than double than what it was last year. I mean, officially. Of course, I'm not counting all the unfunded liabilities and everything like that. Just the official funded debt. The government, the extra government bonds that are being sold to finance the spending. Even if Obama is successful and has a deficit, it's still going to be more than twice the last deficit of Bush. And even if he succeeds, he's still going to add more than five trillion dollars of debt during his first four term, first term, first years in office, even if he's successful in cutting it in half. But of course, he tripled it, and now he's saying he's going to cut it in half. 
I mean, if he really wants to reduce the deficit, do it right now. Don't run it up. I mean, politicians have been telling us for years, I mean, going back, I think, into the Eisenhower administration, that the deficit is a down payment on a surplus. That's nonsense. You know, a bigger deficit never produces a surplus. If we want a surplus, let's cut the deficit right now. Let's go to a surplus. Let's start moving in the right direction. Let's not go backwards to say that we need to go backwards in order to go forwards. You know, and along those lines, that's how Larry Summers spoke. And I saw his interview on, on, on CN CNBC. And he basically said there's no alternative, that we have no economic alternative to running huge deficits and spending a lot of money. Well, first of all, what do you mean there's no alternative? I got plenty of alternatives. How about we don't do it? How about we spend less money? How about we cut government and shrink government? Isn't that a viable alternative? See, according to Larry Summers, that's not an alternative. He says that if we don't kickstart the economy, and according to him, the way you kickstart the economy is the government spends a lot of money, which we know is nonsense. But according to Summers, if we don't kickstart the economy now by running up the deficit, that the economy is going to collapse, and then we're going to have even bigger deficits. Well, not if we cut government spending. Who says that we've got to spend more money if the economy shrinks? How about if the economy shrinks, why don't we shrink government along with it? I mean, that would be the responsible thing. He's basically saying that if the economy contracts, we're going to have no choice but to expand deficit spending anyway. Well, sure they have a choice. They can always spend less money. They can always react. That's like you know a family saying, well, if I lose my job, I have no alternative but to spend more money. No, they don't. If you lose your job, you can cut back. You can always spend less money. That's always an alternative. To say that we have no choice but to increase spending. And, of course, to say that government spending is going to kickstart the economy, that if we just run up the deficits and we spend more money on wasteful government programs, or if we give more money to Americans so that they can go out and buy more stuff that they can't afford, that somehow that's going to kickstart the economy, that's going to help the economy. It's not going to help anything. All that's going to do is help destroy the economy, impair the economy further. We're just piling on more debt on an overly indebted economy. And we're simply standing in the way of the necessary free market reforms that we need to eventually have legitimate economic growth. So not only is Summers completely wrong that there's no choice, but what he is proposing and what Obama is doing will worsen the economy. Maybe it won't appear to be worsening it in the very short term as we run to the stores to spend the money or as the government spends the money into the into circulation for various programs or to keep people employed in non-productive jobs but we will feel the pain associated with these larger debts and a less efficient economy in the relatively near term I mean it, we're not talking about decades away later this year you know this stuff is going to come back to bite us very very quickly but it, it, it's unfortunate it's unfortunate that nobody uh, can understand this and nobody is challenging him. When you see these guys interviewed and they come up with nonsense like this, we have no choice but to run up the deficit. We have no choice but to grow government because if we don't do that, everything is going to collapse. That is sheer, unadulterated nonsense. But, of course, that fits right in with our agenda. They want to expand government. They want bigger government. It's not that there's no choice. That's what they want to do. And they're using this crisis to justify what they want to do by saying if they don't do it, things would get even worse. Well, the reality is things are going to get a lot worse because of what they're doing, not, uh, not uh, despite what they're doing.